So race two here at Alton Park is just a few moments away. The grid for this one is set, remember, by the result from the first race. So it is the championship leader, Alan Henderson, who will line up on the pole position. But alongside him, the man who was a real thorn in his side all the way through that first race, James Blake Baldwin, and he's sure to try and take the fight to the championship leader yet again in race two. Here is the grid then. It's Henderson from Blake Baldwin, John Davies, Liam Murphy, row two, John Greensmith, Simon Goddard, JJ Clements and James Aspinall are on the fourth row of the grid. Then Gary Townsend, Jack Harding round out the top ten. Anthony Neal, one to watch for after his early spin in race one. Will Picken, a great result in the first race on his debut. And watch for Charlie Charman from the back of the grid to try and make progress. That car member was quite badly damaged in race one, but he'll be hoping he can recover from 20th on the grid and uh, get a decent result here at Alton Park. So, grid is forming up and the drivers look towards the starting gantry soon once the back of the grid is all lined up. Henderson, Blake Baldwin, row one, as I said. Liam Murphy there, you can see, on the uh, second row of the grid. He's been having some clutch issues this weekend and uh, that is something he'll, I'm sure, have uh, at the back of his mind going into this one. Jack Harding... As I said, down in 10th place, James Aspinall got himself into the mix as well. There are several drivers in the midfield who will feel that if they can get a good start and get away with the leading two, might actually be able to, uh, to, to take the fight to them and get themselves involved in the fight at the sharp end of the field. 20 minutes then of racing as ever ahead of us. And it's Henderson and Blake Baldwin on the front row of the grid. Who gets the start? The lights go out now. We're racing again at Alton Park. And it looks like a fairly evenly matched start from both front row men. Blake Baldwin makes a better go of it this time than he did in the first race. But again, it's John Davies who's going to try and slip through on the inside into second place. They run side by side for Old Hall Corner. And who came out on top? It looks as though it's still the same as again. JJ Clements sideways in the middle of the pack, just like we saw in the first race at Old Hall Corner. It is still uh, Blake Baldwin second, Davies third, Murphy fourth, Greensmith is in fifth, Simon Goddard sixth, and there is JJ Clements right back in the midfield. But that's both races now that he's gone off on the, off the track at the first corner and spun or half spun back into the middle of the pack. On board with Justin Newnham. That looks like it's Will Picken alongside us going into Island Bend. We're going to brave it out around the outside. That is brave because that's exactly what uh, Charlie Charman tried to do at the first lap of race one. And he ended up in the tyres on the outside. That does not happen to Justin Newnham though. And instead he goes on the attack uh, to try and find a way past uh, Andrew Caird in front of him. There's Gary Townsend in the yellow 223 car, championship sponsor. And Anthony Neal in the Paul Sheard car looking to hopefully have a slightly cleaner race this time around than he had in race one. And he had that very scary moment up at the Druid right hand up over the hill, down towards his lops again. James Blake Baldwin immediately going after Alan Henderson. Those two are already, as they did in race one, starting to make a little bit of a break from the rest of the pack. On the breaks into the Hislop chicane, go Townsend, kneeled. Then you've got uh, James Aspinall, JJ Clements, Jack Harding, all very quick drivers, all capable of running at the front. But such is the competitive nature of the championship this year, they're mired in the midfield and it's very hard to make forward progress. There's Charlie Charman, you saw in the white and red car, already making some forward progress from the back of the field, though. Looks like they've got that car fixed up nicely after its fairly sizable race one shunt. Three Druids goes. John Davies, Liam Murphy, right on his tail, as was the case through most of the first race. A pair of them finishing in the end um, a second and a half apart, but they were usually uh, about a car and a half apart throughout the duration of the race, and that looks like it's going to be the same in race two. Out of Lodge Corner they go. Murphy tries to sit in the slipstream and draw up alongside as they go across the start finish line to end lap one of the second race of the day here around 13 of the championship was Henderson from Blake Baldwin Davies Murphy Greensmith Goddard your top six seventh place for Anthony Neald eighth Gary Townsend ninth is James Aspinall and rounding out the top ten JJ Clements that's after one lap though and this is Mazda MX-5 Supercut Racing so that will change around as we go over the remaining 17 and a half minutes but the top two who have been the class of the field all weekend really Alan Henderson and James Blake Baldwin are making their gap again that they built up in the first race they're extending that gap again now in race two and it looks like they're going to settle it between themselves saw in race one how James Blake Baldwin spent the first three or four laps sat behind Henderson then made his move to go through is that going to be the same plan this time? He doesn't want to let Henderson get his head down and pull away because we've seen Alan do that on several occasions already this year. Once you give him a bit of a gap, it's very difficult to catch him again. And James Blake Baldwin, I'm sure, will be well aware of that. These two raced each other in the Mark 1 Championship last year for several race wins. And so they're used to driving in close quarters with each other. 
And James knows just how quick Alan Henderson can be. Down towards his lops they come. Very tricky breaking zone that. Very steep downhill drop into the chicane. Through the right, through the left, and then back into the right at Nickerbrook. Careful not to hit the tyre stack on the inside of the corner as well. That'll uh, damage your front suspension very easily indeed. And once again, the battling for third place is developing nicely. A big train of four or five cars getting themselves together, led by John Davies, with Liam Murphy still right in his wheel tracks in fourth. Out of Druids, underneath the Paul Warwick Bridge, and in towards the final right-hander at Lodge Corner crowd in the grandstands getting a great view of all of the overtaking action that goes on into that corner it is one of if not the best overtaking opportunity on the circuit on this occasion James Blake Baldwin chooses not to have a go for it but he's uh, right there with Henderson certainly stalking him and looks like he's every bit as quick as the championship leader in the early stages of this race then here's this four-way fight for third John Davies Liam Murphy then John Greensmith and Simon Goddard who's just probably a bit detached actually from that group as I say that it dropped down the hill into Cascades. Davies has to defend from Murphy. He's going to try and carry the speed out of the corner, get in the slipstream down the lakeside straight and perhaps make a move into Island Bend, which is exactly what James Blake Baldwin is trying to do to Alan Henderson. Goes to the inside line into the dauntingly quick left-hander and it's a brave move, but it's a move that works. James Blake Baldwin, as he did in race one, gets to about quarter race distance, then takes the lead, but Henderson fights back immediately on the inside, locks the inside front wheel and they were looking to avoid contact. Then I had a horrible vision for a moment of Alan Henderson careering straight on into the side of the James Blake Baldwin Luckily, though, they avoided getting tangled up together. Blake Baldwin holds the lead, and we are now in for another great dice between these two. Over Hilltop, again, for the third time of asking. And Henderson immediately is forcing James Blake Baldwin to defend. Does he have a go on the inside and on the brakes into his lops? No. Didn't even think about it, did he, really? He was just trying to distract James Blake Baldwin more than anything else. Hoping that he could perhaps force him into a mistake, maybe outbreak himself, run wide open the door for an opportunity to retake the lead out of Nickerbrook there's the fight for third place John Davies Liam Murphy but this time John Greensmith's gone with them and Simon Goddard isn't a million miles back either back on board with John Davies in towards Druids down one gear throw it into the right hander he really throws it into the right hander doesn't he Murphy is there but is he close enough to have a go into Lodge? I wonder Alan Henderson is. He's going to go to the inside of Blake Baldwin. Blake Baldwin's late enough on the brakes to see off that particular challenge. Gets across to the apex just in time to see off the attack from Alan Henderson. And they go back up and over Deer's Leap yet again towards Old Hall Corner. Henderson trying to force Blake Baldwin to take defensive lines into the corner so he can get him with the switchback manoeuvres but uh, James isn't allowing that to happen John Davies has to take a very late defensive line into Old Hall Corner it backs he and Liam Murphy up into John Greensmith who tries to get alongside Liam Murphy down towards Cascades he's done it I think but can he complete the manoeuvre because he's on the outside line into the corner he'd be a brave man to do this but he is a brave man and he goes through into fourth place good stuff that from John Greensmith and he read the situation perfectly in front of him showing again great racecraft you'd expect nothing less really from someone of his experience and he moves through into P4 next target is John Davies in the silver car and he's already starting to think about where it's best to try and have a go at getting past John. Had a half look at the inside into the uh, shell hairpin. Thought better of it. Through the bank, right hand there. And John Davies gets sideways, dips two wheels out onto the grass on the exit of the corner. But Greensmith wasn't really close enough to take full advantage of that. And as these three fight, Simon Goddard, who I said a couple of laps ago, is getting a bit detached from that group, is getting ever closer. So it is once more a four-way fight for third place. Still tied together with a very short piece of string of the top two uh, drivers, James Blake Baldwin and Alan Henderson. You see in the background there, JJ Clements leading a good uh, battle pack as well, which includes Anthony Neal, Gary Townsend, James Aspinall, and I think Jack Harding as well. Through his lops they go. John Davies takes a lot of speed through the uh, right-left flick, and that compromised his exit speed slightly. So Greensmith now is closing back in again in the slipstream under the bridge at Clay Hill, the footbridge over towards the infield of the circuit for spectators. Now into the double apex right-hander at Druids. Still no way through for John Greensmith. And in fact, he's having to really watch his mirrors a bit more now than he'd like. Because Liam Murphy's looking racy behind him. The two blue cars getting themselves together. But John Greensmith feels that there's no need to defend the line into Lodge Corner this time. As they come through to complete another lap, he holds on to fourth place for the time being. Back over the stripe they go. Still Henderson is attacking Blake Baldwin, but still to no avail. 
through they go. Here's this group behind. This is Clements, Neal, Townsend, Aspinall and Jack Harding. The group behind that being led by Carl Garnett. By the looks of it, he's got to the head of that little pack. And as ever with Mazda MX-5 racing, you rarely find a lonely driver. Everyone has someone to race with and more often than not, it's several people to race with because you're in these little groups of cars. Everyone gets themselves into little pockets of cars and uh, they spend the whole race dicing together. Anthony Neal's off the road again at Cascades. He went off at Druids in race one. Now he's gone off at Cascades. He loses two or three positions. Uh, Gary Townsend goes through and James Aspinall goes through and Jack Harding now has ideas of finding a way past as well. Jack had uh, an incident in uh, qualifying earlier on this morning, which is why the car looks slightly second-hand, and apparently it's driving slightly second-hand as well, which is why he's not quite able to take full advantage of that new engine they've put in it for this weekend. He's been struggling for a lack of, uh, for the lack of straight line speed all year, really, as uh, Jack. They've got a new engine in the car, but unfortunately, in practice, uh, earlier on today, he went to put it in the barriers at the uh, left-hander at Island Bend, which caught so many drivers out this weekend, and uh, he's still suffering from some slight war wounds from that accident. James Aspinall looking all over the back of Gary Townsend's car into his lot as he tries to find a way through. And they turn into Nickerbrook Corner and Aspinall all, all of a sudden drops back. So I don't know if he missed a gear or had a moment of some sort out of shot through the uh, his lot chicane then. But he suddenly drops several car lengths back from the two cars in front and he has to work hard again to catch up to them. Should be able to do it though. He's close enough just about to get a bit of a slipstream I think from the two cars ahead. And that should be enough to tow him up to them and uh, he'll then be able to join back in the fun. <laughs> Anthony Neal is spending more time on the grass than the tarmac today, isn't he? Two wheels off again then as he came out of Druids, where he's already had one drama. Three lodge they go, and this time back at the front, Alan Henderson's really forced James Blake Baldwin to defend. Watch for the switch back manoeuvre on the exit of the corner. He carries good momentum out of Old Hall Corner, but is it enough to get alongside by the time they arrive at Druids? The answer is no, but he's surely going to force Blake Baldwin to go slightly defensive again into the corner. Well, Blake Baldwin didn't really have to take too defensive line. That shouldn't hurt his exit speed too much. No change in the group behind. But the lead battle is starting to get more intense as we tick over now into the second half of the race. Nine minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock. Gary Townsend this time drifts out wide like he saw Anthony Neal do a lap ago. He says, well, anything you can do, I can do better. And it doesn't lose him a place, but it loses him a lot of ground to JJ Clements. It also drops him back into the clutches of James Aspinall. So, Gary... Oh, what's gone on in front? Someone's been off, haven't they? And it's John Davies. It's John Davies who's gone off at Island Bend, and that looks like a very, very big shunt indeed. He's clambering out of the car, but John Davies has been off at Island Bend. You saw the tyre smoke first, and then the car stuffed into the barriers. And John Davies, unfortunately, his race comes to an end. And what a promising race it was as well. And back with the race leaders, Alan Henderson's up the inside into the Hislop chicane. He's going to go through, surely. Good stuff there, from, uh, Alan Henderson. And again, it takes him until the second half of the race to retake the race lead away from James Blake Baldwin. But he does it now. James needs to try and stay with him, or even better, fight straight back. You don't see that many overtakes, actually, on the inside into his lobs. It's quite easy to defend that manoeuvre, but Henderson must have got his car just about alongside enough to, uh, to force the issue, get to the apex first, and from that point on, there wasn't really much that James Blake Baldwin could do. There's John Davies. And the marshal's just talking to him, checking that he's absolutely OK. Let's see what happens. Turns into Island Bend. Oh, and a big, big bit of snap over steer as he turned in. And then once he hits the grass, he's a passenger head first into the tyres. But luckily, we've got the softer foam barriers up there at Island Bend to cushion the blow slightly. And here is the dice for the lead again. Blake Baldwin refuses to say die. And he stays, tries to get back alongside Alan Hensley, who squeezes him almost into the pit wall. Blake Baldwin dives back to the outside again into Old Hall Corner. He's going to try for the switch back maneuver on the exit of the corner as well and Henderson gets sideways that surely opens the door for Blake Baldwin to get alongside in towards Drew he's going to be on the wrong side of the road though this is terrific racing between these two they've entertained us all day long and it's continuing well into race two but Henderson somehow by the skin of his teeth hangs on there is Justin Newnham and that rear bumper is hanging on by the skin of its teeth isn't it he's had contact from somebody and uh, has been called into the pits to get that fixed on board with him going into Nick Brook well the car sideways it was hard to tell if that was as a result of contact it was Charlie Charman who was following him and who moved through as a result but uh, whether that was contact or just a mistake from Justin Newnham it was hard to tell that was a very sideways moment from James Blake Baldwin there as he tries desperately to hang on to Alan Henderson through the Britain chicane and over hilltop they go. 
Oh, Henderson really clobbers the curb then on the exit of the chicane. That's possibly going to hurt his exit speed. And Blake Baldwin will think about perhaps doing to Henderson what Henderson did to him a lap ago into his lobs. He's going to go for it at the inside. Late on the brakes, very late on the brakes. He locks up both front wheels and they both have to take to the escape road. Oh my goodness me, that was very nearly a collision between the two of them. They both have to skip the chicane, but there's no real advantage gain because they both had to do it. So Henderson will say he was forced out there and uh, Blake Baldwin will say that he had to do it to avoid a collision and they end up rejoining still with Henderson in the lead and Blake Baldwin second. There is Justin Newnham with the, uh, well, minus a rear bumper now in his lightweight Mazda MX-5 special. But back to the race leaders, six minutes to go. This is one of those races you don't want to end, isn't it? They've been so evenly matched all day long. In the first race, Henderson, towards the end of the race, was able to pull away. Perhaps better tyre management or uh, a little bit of a mistake somewhere from Blake Baldwin. But this time, as we approach the three-quarter race distance, Blake Baldwin is still attached to the rear bumper of the championship leader's car. Look at him weaving this way and that, just trying to distract Allen. But Allen, again, is pretty um, difficult to fluster and holds his ground as the race leader down towards Cascades they go. Henderson still leading the way and it must be said that whilst Henderson is dominating the championship he's extending that championship lead with every race he's not winning the races by huge margins is he? He's really having some fights as the season goes on Blake Baldwin was having a fight with his own car then going through Cascades just slithered out wide onto the grass loses himself a car length or so as they head out onto the lakeside straight and that's all you have to give Alan Henderson just give him a little bit of a breathing space like that and he can build that up into a very comfortable margin. But now Henderson's the one who gets sideways out of shell. And the gap starts to shrink again. Through towards the Britain chicane. Throw it left over the kerb, right over the kerb. And then if you're feeling brave, you'll hit the kerb on the left as well, which they both do. Blake Baldwin just starting to see the white machine getting a little bit smaller out of his front windscreen. They hit the brakes into his lops and Henderson, as we saw in race one, capable of just going that tiny bit quicker than Blake Baldwin when he needs to be. This looks like a very quick lap from Alan Henderson. He set the fastest lap on the final lap of the race in race one. And I wonder if this will be another fastest lap. Certainly looks very, very quick, doesn't he? Up and over the hill they go. In towards Druids. What's going on for third place? Meanwhile, they're a long way back, aren't they? Look still waiting for them to appear into shot at Druids. There they are, and it's Greensmith who's gone alongside Goddard and goes through. So we join them at just the right moment then as John Greensmith moves himself onto the podium. Goddard demoted to fourth. Back with the leader though. Henderson comes out of large corner. He's really been pushing hard on this lap and you can see that it's been worth it because the gap has more than doubled now. Well more than doubled in fact. And he crosses the line and yes it is another new fastest lap. Look at that. Nearly, nearly a sub two minute lap. Two minutes 0 0.020 is just two one hundredths of a second away from the magic two minute barrier. Clements sorry excuse me Greensmith is third Goddard is fourth Clements is in fifth place Murphy's dropped down to sixth in all of this so uh, Liam's uh, pace has dropped off slightly perhaps again a legacy of those clutch issues that he's been suffering from all weekend down through Denton's Goddard's not done with Greensmith yet is he? he'd rather like to get himself back onto the podium Simon who was, had been keeping himself in championship contention despite having not won a race yet this year he's been ultra consistent but then he had a DNF at Cadwell Park and that's rather derailed his championship uh, aspirations, but he's certainly still in the fight for second place in points, and the drivers he needs to beat are JJ Clements and Liam Murphy, so he's doing what he needs to in this race to uh, make that second place a little bit more comfortable for him. Through Shell, third place in this race would, of course, be even better for his championship hopes. But he's got to find his way past one of the most experienced and quickest drivers in the Mazda MX-5 Supercup, Johnny Greensmith, a former Mazda champion, also raced and, and won in Porsches in recent years. He's now made the switch back to Mazdas this season, and it's taken him a little bit of time to get up to speed with that car, but he is now getting up to speed, and the last few meetings he's been a front runner, and that's continued here at Alton Park. There is JJ Clements, Liam Murphy still trying to find a way back past him. Three Nickerbrook they go. Blink Motorsport number 88 of JJ Clements, which started the season off so promisingly, but things just haven't really been going his way recently. He's had a few bad qualifying efforts, which has been hurting his uh, performance over the course of a weekend. And this weekend, 
Again, he could only manage seventh on the grid. And when you qualify midfield in a pack of cars and drivers this evenly matched, that really does spoil your whole, whole weekend. See to the left of the screen there. The last lap board goes out then. Alan Henderson is starting the tenth and final lap of the race. And it looks as though this time around he's going to have a lot less pressure from James Blake Baldwin on the final lap. These last couple of laps have been qualifying laps for Alan Henderson. And they've been enough to really extend the margin. Look at that. Two and a quarter seconds now. Back to James Blake Baldwin in second. But they are 14 seconds clear of John Greenspan in third place these two really have been a class above the rest of the field all weekend checking now with Carl Garnett and Jeff Gurrier both running outside the top 10 they're fighting uh, over 13th 14th place by the looks of it sorry 12th and 13th place excuse me Garnett has it but Gurrier wants it goes to the inside into Old Hall and wasn't quite close enough really but he looks a bit quicker than Carl Garnett at the moment does Jeff if you can find a way through on the last lap you can rest assured he'll have a go and see if he can go through back with Henderson though who's just less than half a lap away from a double race victory here at Alton Park he did it at Snetterton he took the double victory for the first time this year and he's about to do it again at Alton Park by the looks of it down into the Hislop chicane for the last time and he'll be savouring the moment now. His last opportunity is to drive one of the most spectacular circuits in the country. And it's provided some spectacular racing this weekend for the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup. It must be said, Alton Park often has a bit of a re reputation for being tough to overtake at. But we've seen so many overt overtaking manoeuvres and side-by-side -side battles this weekend. It's been hard to keep up. Through Druids for the final time. And the number 90 car on its way to another race win by the looks of it. And again, the championship now starts to look ever more realistic for Alan Henderson. He tips his way in towards Lodge Corner for the last time of asking. And it's been another faultless drive. He had a real fight on his hands, though, for the first three quarters of the race from James Blake Baldwin. But he saw him off in superb fashion. And Alan Henderson wins both races this weekend at Alton Park. Another dominant weekend from Alan. Two fastest laps and the pole position as well. A maximum points haul. Doesn't get much better than that. Second place is Blake Baldwin. This is the fight for third place, though. John Greensmith, Simon Goddard. They're going to be almost side by side across the line. Goddard's trying to fight back right at the death. And at the line... It is Greensmith just by 18 one thousandths of a second. Goddard is fourth, Clements fifth, Murphy sixth, Aspinall seventh, Neild is eighth, then Townsend ninth, and Jack Harding rounds out the top ten. And that battle again went right down to the wire. There's Charlie Charman crossing the line. He's 11th. And who is going to be 12th? Is it Jeff Gurrier or Carl Garnett? Remember, they were fighting on the start of the last lap. It's Gurrier. He found a way through. Jeff Gurrier found a way through into 12th place on the last lap then. Garnett 13th. Andrew Caird crosses the line in 14th position. And then 15th should be, yes, Michael Lawson. He's next up. Then Ray Worley, uh, just in new numbers, dropped down towards the end of the race. So he's going to finish down in 18th place. And Richard Wickland, I think, will round out the field. But it's Alan Henderson who, again, shows everybody how it's done. He's proven as if it needed proving yet again this weekend that not only can he drive quick qualifying laps and quick laps when he's on his own and under no pressure, but he's also more than capable of handling the pressure of a real cutthroat battle. He's had two of them today with James Blake Baldwin. Blake Baldwin, though, I think driver of the day for me because he's really showed how much this new car has reinvigorated him, really, and uh, brought him back into play as a real factor at the front of the field. It's too late for him to mount a championship challenge now, but it certainly bodes well for next year if he can continue this through the back end of this season and then start next year the way he's ending this year, then James Blake Baldwin will certainly be a fact of the championship in 2016. Both drivers celebrating with some um, nice sideways moments for the crowd and for the marshals. Here's confirmation of the result, though. Henderson, Blake Baldwin, Greensmith, Goddard and Clements, the top five. Liam Murphy is sixth. James Aspinall, seventh. Anthony Neal, eighth. Gary Townsend, ninth. Jack Harding in tenth. Charlie Charman recovered to eleventh after his crash in race one. Jeff Gurrier, Carl Garnett, Will Picken, Andrew Caird. Michael Lawson, Ray Worley, Justin Newnham, Richard Wickland round out the 19 finishes. And we lost John Davies with that shunt at Island Bend. championship standings then Henderson now extends his lead to 59 points but what was a three point gap between second third and fourth now is a two point gap with Goddard now second Clements third and Murphy fourth Alan another double win I bet you're getting used to them now <laughs> not really um, obviously wins yeah but this is the second double of the year 
probably the only, the only time I've, no, sorry, the third time I've ever done a double on a race weekend. Um, and I think I was fastest in every session as well, so it's like the full house really. It's The car's just been like perfect. And, and the driver, obviously. <laughs> well, you know, that's a small part really. I mean, you've got to have, you've got to have everything right. And the team's put the, AK Automotive's put the car together really well. I've uh, got to thank Royal Purple Oils as well, keeping the engine in, in check. Yeah, a brilliant weekend for you. Um, and also, I think that you got two, two minutes bang on pretty much. Yeah, I was <laughs> when I, I broke away from Jim's a little bit and I tried to just tidy everything up. And on that particular lap, the first one where I broke away, I was trying to get under the two minute lap and I, I was watching it, watching it. I knew it was going to be very close and it was kind of like two minutes dead. So it was, I don't know, it was a good lap, but I was a bit disappointed it wasn't a, a 159 something, but you know. Not, not far off though. And obviously, championship points. Yeah, I mean, obviously, good points. I don't know what JJ has done today, points-wise, or, or Liam, but uh, yeah, it's all good. Fantastic. Well, well done, and I look forward to seeing what you do for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. James, another fantastic result, second on the podium, and yourself and Alan, another battle again. Yeah, I just couldn't quite keep him behind me. So, uh, awesome battle though. We're really happy. So, car's gone great. Um, Chris Dawkins at Kent MX5 Services has done an amazing job as per usual. Um, apart from me smashing it up in qualifying, but in the end, we had a really good day. So, and I had a great race with Alan. How are you uh, and the car in the heat? Um, I'm, I'm rather hot, and I think the car's tired as well. So, I, I, I need to get her home, and, uh, and I need to go to the pub. <laughs> that sounds about right. Well, good luck um, for the rest of the season and congratulations for today. Great, thank you very much. Jonathan, fantastic result on the podium as well. Yeah, fantastic result. Um, we've been fighting all, all year and especially at the beginning of this weekend. Um, weren't a good qualifying to, to be honest with you, so um, no, it's a good, good end to the day. Uh, how was this one different to race one? I mean, obviously a lot hotter. Uh, damn sight, a lot hotter, uh, a little bit wider on my Mazda rear end to keep Simon behind me. Um, but no, it was a really, really good battle, really. And obviously a lot quicker. Uh, I think the times are slightly slower, so I think it's just counterbalancing it how everyone got slower towards the end of the race, especially me as well. We Simon seemed to be hot, hot pursuit on me rear end, so yeah, um, no good result. Yeah, good race and a good battle and an excellent result. So well done. Cheers, thank you.